Hello, this is United States Ambassador Joseph Sella. Warm greetings on July 4th from Suva, Fiji, where it is morning, and we've begun celebrating and commemorating the Independence Day of the United States of America. On this great event in uh, human history, I'd like to share some thoughts with you. Unfortunately, due to the silent, deadly, and very costly pandemic, we will be postponing our annual Independence Day, otherwise known as J4 celebrations in Fiji and Tonga. However, preparations are underway and invitations will soon be sent for these events to be held later in the year. 75 years ago, World War II had ended in Europe and was nearing its conclusion in the Pacific. Thankfully, peace, stability, security, and freedom have reigned with our allies and partners. We rejoice for this, we treasure this, and we will forever remain vigilant in preserving, protecting, and defending this peace in the Indo-Pacific. Since our birth as a nation, the United States of America has been and will forever remain a beacon and a witness for liberty. The American War for Independence by the 13 colonies began with the battles of Lexington and Concord on April 19, 1775 in Massachusetts with the first shots fired just after dawn in Lexington, known as the shot heard around the world. Soon thereafter, the War for Independence was in full swing. Over a year later, on June 11, 1776, the uh, Continental Congress appointed Thomas Jefferson of Virginia, John Adams of Massachusetts, Benjamin Franklin of Pennsylvania, Roger Sherman of Connecticut, and Robert Livingston of New York to draft a document, quote, declaring the causes which impel the American colonies to the separation, unquote, from the Kingdom of England. The then 33-year-old Thomas Jefferson composed the initial draft, completing in just 17 days. The committee submitted its draft to the Congress on June 28th. After some 86 edits later, on July 2nd, the Congress unanimously voted for independence. The actual document uh, was dated July 4th, uh, and then on July 8th, it was uh, first publicly pronounced in Philadelphia, where Congress had convened and was widely distributed and read to the public villi uh, in villages and towns throughout the 13 colonies. The most revolutionary treatise in all of human history, our Declaration of Independence, certainly complemented by our Constitution, which came 11 years later, begins with this uh, thunderous and stirring prose, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth, the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that all men are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These are timeless truths that resonate with freedom-loving people around the globe and are similarly manifested in the founding documents, mottos, and anthems of the nations I'm accredited to, Fiji, Kiribati, Nauru, Tuvalu, and Tonga, and are held dear by their freedom-loving people. This is the first time in my life I've uh, not been on the shores of the United States of America celebrating the 4th of July, our Independence Day, our 244th uh, the anniversary this year as a republic. Uh, and due to this pandemic, uh, I'm uh, presently apart from my beloved wife and dear seven children, but know they will be celebrating this occasion with great vigor, patriotic hymns, and uh, many fireworks. So at the moment, I cannot help but be reflective on a, a few things. First, the sense of profound gratitude for all those who have given their lives in defense of our country and those of our allies and partners. Second, when my forebears first entered New York Harbor from Europe, what they must have been thinking uh, when they first saw the Statue of Liberty, Liberty holding her torch high above her head. Uh, I can imagine they were full of joy, hope, and probably relieved and comforted to see such a welcoming symbol. Third, I have nostalgic thoughts of the simple joys of childhood, swimming with friends to escape the heat of summer, barbecuing with my family, idyllic evening weather, listening to crickets and frogs, and watching fireworks and sparklers. Lastly, during these challenging and uncertain times of this uh, pandemic, uh, in which I'm serving as an ambassador to the, of the United States of America, how proud I am to be an American and honored to serve as one of her representatives to other nations in the world. And from this unique post of leadership, the unyielding confidence I will forever have in the timeless truth the United States of America is founded upon. It is such a unique blessing and will uh, be forever grateful for it. During my time of service, I will operate uh, in total transparency. I'll be a force for good and I will be a representative light for my nation to all those I encounter. 
In conclusion, I'd like to uh, recite Concord Hymn, a beautiful poem written by Ralph Waldo Emerson uh, for the dedication of the memorial for the Battle of Concord. It reads, by the rude bridge that arched the flood, their flag to April's breeze unfurled, here once the embattled farmers stood and fired the shot heard round the world. The foe long since in silence slept, alike the conqueror silent sleeps, and time the ruined bridge has swept down the dark stream which seaward creeps. On this green bank, by this soft stream, we set today a votive stone that memory may their deed redeem. When, like our sires, our sons are gone, spirit that made those heroes dare to die and leave their children free, bid time and nature gently spare the shaft we raise to them and me. May God bless the United States of America.